the water above welcome back this will be a short video about an observation I made while getting a camera ready for a balloon launch that took place last week my family and I performed two launches one on the third and the other on the fourth of August the first launch had three objectives the first objective was to test out new procedures with working with hydrogen the second was to take pictures for David Wise's project that I couldn't complete on my last project. And the third was to perform an experiment that a fellow researcher, Ariel Fawcett, brought to my attention. She suggested recording a high altitude video with a camera using an infrared filter and pointed me to another researcher that had done similar work in this area. You can find some of his work on his YouTube channel, J. Tolan Media One. After checking out his work, I found it interesting and decided to include the camera with an infrared filter on my next launch. I had no idea on how to do it, so I asked J. Tolan what he used on his videos. I guess he got this question a lot and he supplied the information in the description of his video. I checked out the camera he used and found it too heavy for my needs. So I adapted one of my cameras with the filter he suggested. The filter he used was a 950 nanometer. I ordered one and performed a test with not so good results. I later found out that I needed to remove the camera's IR cut filter before installing the 950 nanometer filter. This meant removing the lens and then removing the IR cut filter from it. Once it was removed, it could not be reinstalled, so I needed to make a decision which lens to do this on. I thought it would be a good idea to get a comparison shot with a camera already in the capsule. So I used the same lens that was on it. We used two GoPro Hero 4 black cameras with a 4.35 millimeter lens. I arranged the cameras so that they were side by side and they could record the same view. After the modifications were completed, I recorded a short video clip to test the camera. The clip recorded in the infrared spectrum showed our kitchen in a strange way. Some items that were dark in regular light showed up light in infrared, and other things looked completely different. Water, for example. There were three containers of water on the countertop, and they recorded black. As I panned the camera, it passed the aquarium, and it too recorded black. I thought this would be something I would like to explore more after the two balloon launches. I finished reviewing the video, and the lens needed to be fine-tuned. I couldn't do this inside the house because it needed to be done by focusing the camera to infinity. It was too dark outside so I decided to take the camera to work the next day and perform the fine-tuning during my lunch break. After completing the tuning I installed the 950 nanometer filter and recorded another test video. While reviewing that video, I noticed something that gave me pause. I noted that the sky was the same shade of black that was recorded of the water in my house the night before. This piqued my interest and I wanted to confirm what I was thinking with another experiment, but that would have to wait until I got home. After arriving home, I found my wife cooking in the kitchen and there wasn't enough space to conduct the experiment. So I did the experiment in one of the bathrooms upstairs. I recorded water as it filled a sink. Then I reviewed the video. I noticed the water in the video was a lighter shade than the water recorded downstairs. I wanted to find out what was causing the difference. So I went back to the bathroom and tried to find the cause. I sat on the edge of the bathtub and started checking off things in my head when it came to me. The lighting in the bathroom was different from the lighting downstairs. 
The bathroom had incandescent bulbs and the kitchen had a combination of fluorescent and halogen bulbs. I thought this was the reason why the water had two different shades in the video clip. I started wondering why the light produced different shades, so I researched the light bulbs. I found that different types of bulbs use different gases. The fluorescent lights work by ionizing the gas in the tube with enough voltage to make it conductive. The ionized gas reacts with mercury to produce ultraviolet light which then reacts with the phosphorus coating on the inside of the glass tube. This will produce a full spectrum light. The gases used in the bulbs are called non-reactive noble gases. These gases include helium, neon, argon, nitrogen, and many others. While reading this information, I remember research done by Dan Dimension. He noticed how the sky glowed around the sun in some of my night balloon launch videos and theorized that it could be the noble gases in the atmosphere reacting with the sun's electromagnetic field causing this effect. He has a good video explaining this and I will include a link to it in the description. I started to form a hypothesis of what I was seeing in these videos. I knew that the water I recorded in my home was indeed water. I speculated that the blackness I recorded in the sky was also caused by water. I suspected that the noble gases ionized in the fluorescent lights produce a light with a wavelength that is the same wavelength as the light produced by the sun's electromagnetic field reacting with the noble gases in the atmosphere. This wavelength of light reacted with water to produce the black shade we see when recording it in the infrared spectrum. I thought about the properties of water and wondered if it could exist in the conditions above the sky. One property of water is it is in its liquid state at normal atmospheric pressure between 32 and 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees to 100 degrees Celsius. I looked through the data I have been collecting from my balloon launches and found something interesting. The temperature data produced a pattern. The temperature would start out high, whatever the ambient temperature was at the time of the launch. Then the temperature would drop as the balloon gained altitude. The temperature usually bottomed out between negative 70 and negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The altitude that it bottomed out at was between 43 and 53,000 feet. Then the temperature would start to warm up the higher the balloon traveled above 53,000 feet. This would continue until the balloon reached its burst altitude and then the temperature would drop back down as the balloon capsule descended to about 53,000 feet. After 53,000 feet, it would then begin to warm up to ambient temperature the closer the balloon got to the ground. The second launch we conducted that weekend was an attempt at breaking the latex balloon altitude record. That balloon achieved the altitude higher than any other balloon I have launched since I started doing these experiments and it topped out at 125,579 feet. This was not high enough to break the record, but it was my personal best. On that launch, the temperature pattern from the flight was the same as I described earlier and topped off at 32.5 degrees Fahrenheit at 125,008 feet. 32.5 degrees Fahrenheit is warm enough for the water to exist in its liquid state at sea level. However, the atmospheric pressure at this altitude is too low for it to exist in its liquid state. I thought about the containers of water in my kitchen and how the waters were contained in the bottles. And I thought, if the waters above are contained in a similar manner, maybe the container would maintain the pressure the water needed to maintain its liquid state. The temperature is warm enough and if there is a dome separating our atmosphere from the water, 
Maybe it would maintain the pressure on the other side and keep the water in a liquid state. I don't have enough information to prove there is water above the sky. I'm just speculating. Maybe one day we will have more information and find the answers to the questions we all have. Y'all take care. Bye.